Hey everybody, hope you're doing really well. So um, it's been a nice week actually for copy trading for me. A couple of the people who I just added to the portfolio are actually in the green, just uh, but they're in the green. Obviously Melvin's still in the green. I will have a look at this a bit later on. I also found that new trader to copy, although I couldn't copy him because it's blocked because he's already got too much assets under management, even though he's only on the blue tier. So you can see in the video I made two days ago about that trader, hopefully I can copy him at some point in the future. He's on the watch list, I'm watching him. Now the same person who showed me that trade has showed me another trader. Uh, another Forex trader who's got some promise. Now I'll be making a video sort of about him and possibly copying him uh, next week. So hit the notifications bell if you want to see that video when I upload it. Another thing I've been looking at, if we go over to the Discover page, there's these sort of managed portfolios uh, by eToro over here on the smart portfolios. Now there's one of these smart portfolios here which kind of cover different um, types of the market, parts of the market and different sort of industries and stuff like that. This one here, Gainers Quarterly, really clever sort of thing. What it's doing is uh, Etar is actually combing through all of their different traders. Some are popular investors, a lot of them aren't actually even popular investors. The AI or the algorithm or the, the intelligence, machine intelligence in eToro is going through all the traders on the site, looking for the ones who are doing particularly well, then sort of grouping them all together into this basket of traders which you can then invest in. So I'll be having a look at this uh, next week, another different video. So also hit the um, notifications button if you want to see more about this one, which uh, really has some promise. It's, uh, the smart polio portfolios. I've never really been into them, but um, this one this one I kind of like, although there are some drawdowns. We'll talk about them next time. So back to the portfolio here, and I can't tell you how nice it is to see some green here. It just makes me happy every time I see it. We've got Selesh, Izabi, and Fund Manager Zek here, who's just under profitable. These three are three of those new traders that I found. These two I found by going to that um, page, the new sort of copy people page, where you can sort through by uh, these ones with the consistency, most consistent traders, and you can find them both there. Interestingly, uh, Melvin, 10x cycle trader, who's doing really well as well, he also was on that page, although I didn't know about that page before. But going back and looking at it, he was there as well. So these three of these are really some of the most consistent traders on eToro. Look at them, thank God for them at the moment, in their green. Fund manager Zek, he was um, one of the recommendations from the sort of eToro recommendations algorithm. They throw him up and say, have a look at this guy. He's just in the red, but I have high hopes for him as well. Now, the, the, the one I just sort of looked at last uh, couple of days ago, he's a Forex trader. The new one who I'll be looking at in a few days, I'll make that video next week, also a Forex trader. Now, Forex traders, I think it's a little bit different. If you're a Forex trader, tell me, but it's not like a normal asset, right? So with like Apple or Amazon or whatever, you buy it and you hope it'll go up. There's potentially a zero and there's potentially a moon, a real high price valuation. With currencies, you're always comparing one currency to another. So for instance, with currencies, if all of the currencies of the world start going down at the same time, everything starts collapsing and all the currencies are going down, whichever currency is strongest compared to the others is still going to have lots of money flowing to it. So there's always going to be one currency stronger than the others. Do you know what I mean? Even if they're all shooting down, the strongest one will still get the inflows of money globally. So it might be that there's the Great British Pound, the Euro and the US dollar. Let's say all three of them are dropping. If the dollar's falling slower than the other two, money will flow into the dollar. So you buy dollar against Euro, buy dollar against Great British Pound. Do you know what I mean? Then there's the yen against the Euro and the Swiss franc against the Great British Pound. There's all ways to play it. And I think Forex traders don't think in quite the same way. They're used to the market moves this way, the market moves that way, whatever. You know, volatility is their friend. They use a lot of leverage for that reason, to try and increase volatility. So um, I'm looking forward to having a couple, hopefully, potentially, maybe, of Forex traders in here, just in case there is volatility. Things are looking a bit scary at the moment. Be nice to have them in there, a mix. That way I'll have sort of index traders, I'll have some commodities in there, so, uh, people doing stocks, some currency traders. Be a nice diversified portfolio, I hope. I hope, we use words for like diversification. Hopefully have a little bit of a mix and sort of get things going green, be a bit resilient, you know, no matter what happens, hopefully someone will be doing well. So let's have a look at how Melvin's doing. So Melvin has had not a bad month. If we go to a statistics page, we can see that he's done 1.71% so far in October. He's up 7.55% for the year so far. His uh, risk scores there staying really level. 3.14 is his max yearly drawdown. That's the most his account has sort of gone down at any point before going 
going up again in the year, which is absolutely superb. This copy is a holding stable. What's he been trading? Here we can see his portfolio, which is all his active trades at the moment. But if we go to history there, we can see all the closed trades. And here I can set it from like seven days, 30 days, three months. I'll leave it on 30 days so we can see the last month. And there we are, we can see SPX 500, NASDAQ 100, some indices there that he's buying and selling. I think that's Roblox there that he's, he's buying. He's made some money off Great British Pound against US dollar, Forex trade. And there we are making, making lots of money this, this month actually doing quite well. So uh, in his portfolio, he's got lots open which aren't doing so well, but over the month, he's actually in profit 1.71%. Thank you very much, Melvin. Really well done. Uh, next one in my portfolio is Selesh, who have just added. He's up $14.63. So what's Selesh been doing? Um, let's go to his... Uh, uh, stats over here and have a look at him. So he's up 1.16% in October, up 23.99% for the year. So doing hugely well. Obviously statistics going back there, we're still in uh, green all the years. Uh, his uh, a little less level, but really low, still average risk two, max three, average two, three. Really still low risk, 5.61% max yearly drawdown. That's amazing, sort of low risk for the rewards that he's been getting. He's doing really, really well. We'll see what he's trading, all sorts of stuff. So mostly um, we've got here some Forex trades, Euro against US dollar, Great British Pound against US dollar. We've got German 40, the German index, DJ 30, American one. We've got PayPal, we've got some companies here. Um, lots of stuff going on, a mixture, mixed bag over there. We go to his uh, history again, last 30 days, and we can see, look, he's done really well on gold. Huge gains on these gold trades. Opened last month and closed on the 13th of this month. Really huge on the gold trades. Been doing very well. Now these, look, these are, look, see so they're hitting their stop loss. This red thing means it's hit the stop loss. Stop loss is an automatic cutoff switch. You can set it to any one of your trades and you can specify to eToro, if this trade ever goes down to this point, just close the trade. It's called a stop loss lovely name for an automatic switch. Now what's happened is that these trades have gone into such profit, he's in so much profit, that wherever he sets the stop loss, he sets it above the point where he's still gonna be in profit. Does that make sense? He bought it here, at this point he's in profit, but he goes all the way up to here and sets the stop loss there. So at this point, he can just leave that trade to do whatever it wants, knowing that if it ever goes down and hits his stop loss, he'll still have made money from where he bought it. It's a wonderful position to be in. And he's been in that position with all of these, you see? All of these green trades, they've all stopped. He didn't close the trade manually. They all hit the stop loss because he had set the stop loss above where he had bought it. So he set the, set the stop loss while he was already in profit, then he can just leave the trade. If it keeps going up, it keeps going up. Maybe he can raise that stop loss even further. But there we are. What a wonderful position to be in, that the worst thing that can happen is you're gonna end up in good profit. That's lovely, isn't it? Look at that. So really nice gains there, lots of them. And we can put, click show more, he's probably got more of them. Look at that, going back down. So he's been doing really well there. Um, Celestino Brunetti there with his uh, uh, green star. Thank you very much, Celeste. Really well done. Isabi over here. Now, Isabi has still got the Bitcoin trade open, uh, which has just been open, you know, it's been open for ages. I think she opened hers in June. She opened this Bitcoin trade in January, February, March, April, May, June, on the 3rd of June. Now, she's down uh, about $4,000, $4,129, I think. She opened it at $30,722. Where is Bitcoin at the moment? Bitcoin is at 26,593. So my copy of the Bitcoin trade, you see, I bought it much later when I copied it about, you know, a couple of weeks ago, opened that trade automatically. Mine's up a little bit. So her, she's down at a loss in that, but mine's up a little bit because Bitcoin's gone up a tiny bit since I, I copied her last week. Um, so if I go back just here, this is my copy. This is my, uh, not her portfolio, but the, the trades that I've copied through her. So to see the closed trades here, I go to view, and this is what she's closed. Here we are, we have one trade bought on the 2nd of the 10th, and closed on the 2nd of the 10th. So on the 2nd of October, she made one trade, bought at 11.55, closed at 4 p.m. So it's basically, she's held it open for four hours for 92 cents. That's the only trade so far this month. Let's go to a portfolio and just see if we're all synced up, and see if there's anything else that she's made this month. I doubt it. So no, so, well, I mean, I'm completely in sync with her. It's not that, you know, I'm not copying trades that she's making. She's only made one trade this month. She made 2.04% on that particular trade and her stats are showing that she's up 0.31% for October. So she's still keeping that green streak, but she's only made one very small trade so far this month, apart from leaving that Bitcoin trade open. So 0.31% so far this month, 9.39% so far for the year. So she's still in profit. Someone pointed out, by the way, I didn't understand this, that she made such a lot 
loss here and then there was zero that year obviously that was like you know when everyone was worried about getting sick remember that was the first month of it and then she just stopped trading for that year so that makes more sense of what happened there because i thought that looks a bit strange okay so that's it for the green people in the portfolio now fund manager zek is the next one he's one of the new people that i copied as well just copied him in one of the last videos um he was actually in the green it was lovely to see sort of four out of the seven people that i'm copying in the green but unfortunately it hasn't lasted he's just just in the in the negative territory but only a tiny bit just half a percent in the negative territory if we go and look at what he's doing uh, in his stats page we can see that he's down 0.77 percent for october and that's 22.19 percent so far for the year obviously going back and looking at statistics he's got lots of years of statistics happy to wait and see what he does now he's got so many different assets open in his portfolio he really does trade a lot of assets at the same time uh, going to his history though we can see that there's this one hong kong stock which was open on the 22nd of march of this year and he's closed it now on the 4th for a 45.93 percent loss which is a huge loss for him but he's closed that out um, there's so much else open in the portfolio obviously i want to see him uh, green i want to see him sort of all of them doing well and more green than red in my portfolio but i'm happy to leave him he's only a tiny bit down Go on, fund manager Zek. That's, uh, hopefully he'll get green soon, but that's it was great to see it whilst it was there. Next, we've got Analysis Cyclico. Now, Analysis Cyclico was almost breaking even. He was at minus like $7. And um, we can have a look there at his statistics quickly. Uh, he's looked down 1.51% in October. He's had a couple of bad months. He's still up 3.28% for the year. His risk scores are still nice and low. He is losing copiers. In the portfolio, a lot of stuff open. We go to the history and he's just had a really difficult time again last 30 days we can he was so close to, to, to sort of breaking even at least in my portfolio and then we can just see in the last 30 days just a lot of losses a lot one after another of losses you know these all hitting stop loss on these sort of uh, forex trades here just boom 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 one after the other some nice profit there on selling cocoa really nice profit there but so he's done well on that as a sort of agricultural commodity i'm not sure if cocoa's class as a commodity or an agricultural product really in terms of assets but lots of problems there and these opened last month so it's sort of short-term trades he's just sort of taken the wrong direction on these and it's really sort of impacted the portfolio but you know hopefully he'll come back and he'll sort of be able to make that back will be a big nice green but there we go so analysis cyclical was getting close here we are javier here javier is just around the same to be honest javier has well minus 0.74 percent he's down 10.5 percent for uh the year last 30 days lots of actually nicely closed trades look at that lots of stuff over the last 30 days which he has closed in profit but uh, it must be the ones which are still open which are really dragging it down i'm not sure which ones uh we'll leave him there still um for the moment with Javier and slow and steady how much can I withdraw remember I'm paused my copy of slow and steady is actually paused at the moment because I'm wanting to withdraw money so I'm just waiting till the money builds up how much can I remove now I can now remove another hundred and ten dollars so there we are let's remove that hundred and ten dollars um, update and slow and steady I'm now copying in with 556 it's changing the stop loss there it's altering everything and I've now got 825 of my cash available balance to see what I'm going to do with it so glad this is going well thanks for all your comments and suggestions and tips on who to copy um especially you sir well thank you very much for that really good to have eyes and ears um and thanks for liking the videos leaving comments it really helps to sort of get the channel going again and yeah cheers in general hope you're doing well and have a lovely weekend all right see you guys see you next week Bye bye